Hey there, science fans. Welcome back to another exciting exploration of the world of science and technology. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of energy management with ISO 50001, a global standard that's making waves. Now, you might be wondering, what in the world is that? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Well, imagine a recipe, a set of instructions, but instead of baking a cake, you're baking in energy savings. It's like having a secret ingredient for efficiency. ISO 50001 is like a trusted guidebook for organizations of all shapes and sizes, from small businesses to large corporations. It helps them put together a practical system for managing energy, ensuring that every watt is used wisely. Think of it like a detective's handbook, but instead of solving crimes, you're solving energy waste. It's all about finding those hidden inefficiencies. This isn't just about flipping off the lights when you leave a room. It's a comprehensive approach to energy management. It's about taking a close look at how energy is used in every nook and cranny of an organization, from the factory floor to the office coffee machine. Every little bit counts. The goal? To use less energy, save money, and do our part for the planet. It's a win-win-win. By adopting ISO 50001, organizations can make a significant impact on their energy consumption and environmental footprint. Now, the idea of saving energy isn't exactly new, right? We've been reminded to turn off the lights since we were kids. But the concept of a formal energy management system, that's a bit more recent. It all started with industries realizing that energy, like any resource, is precious and shouldn't be wasted. They started looking for ways to be more efficient, to get the most out of every watt. This led to the birth of various energy management standards and guidelines. But things really took off with the launch of ISO 50001 in 2011. This international standard provided a common language for energy management, a framework that organizations worldwide could understand and adopt. And just like any good recipe, it's been updated over the years to keep up with the times. So, what's inside this energy saving guidebook? Let's dive in and explore the core components that make up the ISO 50001 framework. ISO 50001 follows what's called the Plan Do Check Act cycle. This cycle is fundamental to the standard and ensures a systematic approach to energy management. It's a continuous loop that helps organizations make steady progress towards their energy goals. By following this cycle, companies can ensure they are always moving forward and improving their energy performance. Think of it like a scientific experiment. Just as scientists hypothesize, test and refine their experiments, organizations can use this cycle to test and improve their energy management strategies. You start with a hypothesis, your energy policy, then you design an experiment, which is planning, conduct the experiment, that's implementation and operation, analyze the results, which is checking, and then use what you've learned to improve the experiment, corrective action, and make new hypotheses. This iterative process ensures continuous improvement. This cycle is driven by a set of key elements, each playing a crucial role in the overall framework. Energy policy. This is where you set the stage by declaring your commitment to energy management. It's a formal statement that outlines your organization's intentions and direction regarding energy performance. Planning. Here's where you set your targets, figure out what you need to measure and develop your energy saving game plan. This step involves identifying significant energy uses and establishing objectives and targets to improve energy performance. Implementation and operation. Time to put your plan into action. This involves executing the energy management plan, ensuring that all processes and procedures are followed to achieve the set targets. Checking. Now you get to play energy detective, monitoring and measuring your energy performance and comparing it to your targets. This step is crucial for understanding how well your energy management plan is working. Corrective action. Did things go according to plan? If not, no worries. This is where you make adjustments and learn from any hiccups along the way. It's about identifying non-conformities and taking action to correct them. Management review. Finally, the top brass takes a look at the big picture, reviewing the system's performance and making decisions for the future. This step ensures that the energy management system remains effective and aligned with the organization's strategic goals. Every great endeavor starts with a clear vision, and energy management is no different. It's about setting a direction and ensuring everyone is on the same page. 
The first step in ISO 50001 is establishing your energy policy. This policy serves as the foundation for all your energy management efforts. This isn't just some dusty document, it's a public declaration of your organization's commitment to using energy responsibly. It outlines your intentions and sets the tone for your energy saving journey. Next comes the planning stage. This is where the vision starts to take shape. It's like mapping out a road trip. You need to know your destination and the best route to get there. You wouldn't hit the road without knowing where you're going and how you'll get there, right? In this stage, you'll set your energy baseline. Figure out how much energy you're currently using. This is your starting point. Identify energy saving opportunities. Where's the energy being wasted? Are there any energy hogs that need taming? This step is crucial for finding inefficiencies. Establish objectives and targets. What are your energy saving goals? How will you measure success? Setting clear measurable targets is key. Develop action plans. It's time to get specific. What actions will you take to reach your targets? This is where the rubber meets the road and your plans turn into actions. Section five, putting plans into action, implementation and operation. All right, you've got your plan. Now it's time to roll up your sleeves and make it happen. The phase is all about putting your energy saving strategies into practice. This might involve Think energy sipping appliances, LED lighting, and smart thermostats. Could you tweak your operations to use less energy? Get everyone on board the energy saving train. Remember, communication is key. Make sure everyone understands their role in achieving your energy goals. Section six, checking your progress, monitoring, measurement, and analysis. You wouldn't bake a cake without checking on it, would you? The same goes for energy management. The phase is all about keeping tabs on your progress. This involves, are you on track to meet your targets? What's working well? What needs improvement? Did something unexpected happen? Think of this as your energy report card. It tells you how you're doing and where you can improve. Section seven, taking action, corrective and preventive measures. Even with the best laid plans, things don't always go swimmingly. That's where it come in. Did you miss one of your energy targets? No worries. Figure out why it happened and take steps to get back on track. Did you discover a potential energy wasting gremlin? Great. Implement measures to prevent it from causing trouble in the future. The key here is to learn from your experiences and continually improve your energy management system. Section eight, the importance of management review. Last but not least, we have the management review. This is where the folks in charge take a step back and look at the big picture. They'll review things like the overall effectiveness of the energy management system, the progress made towards achieving energy targets, and any new opportunities or challenges. This regular checkup ensures that your energy management system stays relevant and effective. Section 9. Reaping the Rewards Benefits of ISO 50001 now, you might be thinking, this all sounds like a lot of work, and you're right. Implementing ISO 50001 does require effort, but trust me, the rewards are worth it. Here are just a few benefits of joining the ISO 50001 club. Reduced energy costs. Using less energy means lower utility bills. Cha-ching. Improved energy efficiency. Get more bang for your energy buck. Enhanced reputation. Show the world you're serious about sustainability. Competitive advantage in a world that's increasingly focused on green practices, ISO 50001 can give you a leg up. Section 10, Achieving Certification, a step-by-step -step guide. Ready to take the plunge and get certified to ISO 50001? Great. Here's a quick rundown of the process. Preparation, get your ducks in a row by establishing an energy team, defining your scope, and conducting a gap analysis. Documentation, create the necessary documents, including your energy policy, procedures, and records. Implementation, put your plan into action and start tracking your energy performance. Internal audit, conduct an internal audit to ensure your system meets the requirements of ISO 50001. Certification audit, a third party certification body will come in and audit your system. Certification, if you pass the audit, congratulations, you're now ISO 50001 certified. Section 11, 
maintaining momentum, continuous improvement. Getting certified is a fantastic accomplishment, but it's not the finish line. ISO 50001 is all about continuous improvement. That means constantly looking for ways to optimize your energy performance and make your system even better. Remember, energy management is a journey, not a destination. So keep learning, keep innovating and keep saving energy. And there you have it, folks. The wonderful world of ISO 50001. It's a powerful tool for organizations of all sizes to reduce their environmental impact and save money in the process. So what are you waiting for? Let's get energized.